Hey guys, Vladimir here, and I thought I would do a quick video just to show you how to uh, download a STL file from Thingiverse and modify it in Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, Thingiverse, and I'm going to grab this Rhino here. So the backstory behind this is I have a friend who uh, asked for a request. Basically, they wanted a rhino uh, but instead of eyes they wanted X's on the eyes and the reason is that there's a local restaurant called the blind rhino and that's their logo and she wanted to give it to them as a gift so uh, I didn't want to have to model a whole rhino so I went on Thingiverse and this is what I found this low poly rhino by uh, Amo Amao Chan um, so that's what we're going to use and I just need to bring it into Fusion and go ahead and, and modify the head um, to make an X where that I is. So I've already downloaded it and I'm going to import it into Fusion. So what I will do is just go to insert and insert mesh. Now it looks like there's been some updates because before you didn't have this option unless you went into if you right click on the top of your browser here and go do not capture design history um that was the only way you could get that option now uh, i guess they did some updates and you're able to just go ahead and, and grab the mesh so i'm gonna go into uh, my downloads folder and it is rhino head so i'm gonna bring it in i'm not gonna uh, manipulate it in any way i'm just gonna click ok and now I have this STL file, but I can't really do anything with it, right? Like I can't extrude if I try to um, create extrude, um, nothing's going to happen. It's just an STL file. Um, so before I can do anything with this, uh, there's, a, there's a couple steps I'm going to have to take here. So I actually stumbled across this. Um, so if I right click, I can go to edit. Um, this must be a new update because I never remember seeing this before um, or I could have just missed it but if I go to edit that brings me into a whole nother environment here which is the mesh environment which you don't see it originally just by clicking the drop down menu you actually have to go and right click it and choose edit and so now we're in mesh and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna first let me go to select and I'm gonna make sure I have paint selection on and I'm just going to go ahead and select this whole eye. And the selection is really smart. So look how quickly it did that. I just knew exactly what I wanted. And now I'm going to go to modify. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to choose erase and fill. And look how quickly that happened. It just, it basically did exactly what I wanted. It, it completely filled in that hole. So I'm going to leave, I can play around with these sliders, but basically that's what I wanted so I'm just gonna hit OK and that was it and here I'm gonna do I can actually probably mirror that on the other side but I'm just gonna do it again just to show you guys um, how simple that was so just a quick selection modify erase and fill click OK um, so there we go now I'm just gonna click finish mesh and now I'm back to the modeling environment and now what I want to do is convert this to a B rep and now is the point where actually I have to go in right click and choose do not capture design history so once I do that it's gonna give me um, a warning telling me that the design history will be removed um, and I won't see the timeline so I'm gonna click OK and you see my timeline disappeared but now I have the option when I click here I can choose mesh to be wrap and I'm just gonna click OK has a new body and there we go now I have an actual solid body um, that I can manipulate so I'm gonna go ahead and so this surface here should be flat but it, there's all these triangles here but it is flat um, and in fact if I click on one of these faces and just hit delete look how um, Fusion is able just to solve that and, and figure it out that that just needs to be flat so there's there's a bunch of things you can do with this um, you know at this point that that are really neat so let's go ahead now and put our X in here where uh, our I is 
So to do that, I'll go ahead and bring in the uh, sketch of the logo. So I'm going to go to insert, uh, attach canvas. I'm going to, well, let's select my plane. So we click on origin here. Zoom out. Um, you know what? That's, I want it on a mid plane and this isn't, I didn't, when I brought it in, I didn't center it. So let's create a mid plane. And so these two faces look parallel. So I'm going to go to construct uh, mid plane. I'm going to click on this face and this face. And there we go. I created a plane right in the middle there. All right. So let's try that again. Uh, construct mid plane. Oh, I'm sorry. What was I doing? Uh, insert. Insert. Attach canvas. And I'll choose that mid plane as my plane. And uh, for my image, I'm going to go uh, right into my downloads folder grab my rhino logo so i see it came in upside down so i'm just gonna turn that 180 and let's go ahead and flip horizontally so we're facing the same way i'm gonna move it into place here let me zoom in and let me bring down the opacity or actually bring it up a little bit And I'm going to scale this up. So I basically, I just want this X where this circle is. Let me kind of center that view here. And I'm just going to grab it and move it over. Maybe scale it just a little bigger. Right there looks good. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and uncheck my body here. And um, now I'm going to create a sketch just basically uh, following this X. So uh, let's go ahead and go sketch, create sketch, and I'm going to choose that plane. Uh, I'm going to click L for my line tool, and I'm just going to basically just trace this. Now, I can do these little jagged edges, but honestly, it's not really going to show up well um, when I 3D print it just because they're so fine. So I'm not really going to worry about them. I'm just going to kind of um, go ahead and only follow the the sort of the, the bigger changes in the line direction here. Uh, do something like this. Okay, so I'm gonna click stop sketch and I can get rid of the canvas now and I'm gonna choose my sketch, hit E for extrude. I'm going to start bringing this out and then I'm going to click bodies. Okay, so now here's a, a quick tip. So normally I would have probably made a sketch here, extrude this out or extrude it in to get that cut and then make another sketch here. Um, but you can go ahead and, and take a look at your dialog box here. You don't have to start right where you created that sketch you can actually choose an offset so under start i'm going to go offset plane and i can choose an offset distance let's try 15 is too much so we'll try 10. okay that looks good so it's actually here's the plane i created where my sketch is and it's going to start extruding from here so i've got 10 uh, millimeters away from that and i'm going to go distance all and click ok and there's my x and now i'm going to do the same thing again for the other side again i could mirror it um but i think it's, it's just as as easy to go ahead and just grab that sketch and do another extrusion so let's just do that i'm gonna go ahead and choose this sketch e for extrude um, this time the only difference is i'm just gonna choose instead of um, an offset of 10 i'm just gonna say offset of negative 10 and then distance all and click OK. So there we go. Now I have my X's on both sides. I can get rid of that sketch 
and all I need to do now is send this to the printer. Um, you'll want to make sure, uh, especially since I brought this in as an STL, I want to. I'm gonna make my life easier if I if this is flat, uh, you know, to my plane uh, when I upload it to my um, my three D printer, because um, I don't want to be using the three D printing utility to kind of tweak it and get it flat. I mean, Simplify 3D makes it pretty simple, but um, if you're exporting it to like MakerBot desktop, it it's, it's, can be a bit of a pain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on that origin. And you can see here my Z. I made sure my Z is up. And I'm going to go ahead and go to Modify, Align, and I'm going to choose that bottom plane. And I'm going to make sure that that's aligned with my... Uh, X, Y um, axis here, or X, Y plane. Click on that, and and that'll do it. Okay, so now all I have to do is make 3D print, click on the model here, and I'm going to send it to my MakerBot. So I'll click OK, and there we go. There's my new, new STL file ready to be printed. Um, easy way to just modify uh, an STL file from Thingiverse. Now, the reason this worked so well is because this is a low poly uh, model, um, and Fusion was able to handle that conversion. If you bring something um, that's uh, you know has a, a huge poly count, um, then you're going to have issues because there's going to be um, problems converting it and you may have to take some additional steps and I'll do another video showing you how to handle that as well um, um, best way to, to approach that so uh, so there you go um, if you enjoyed this video go ahead and uh, click the like button and subscribe for more tutorials like this um, also don't forget to uh, check out my 3D printing course. Actually, it's 3D designing with Fusion 360 course, uh, which I'm going to leave a link down below. All right, guys, take care.